Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello family, hello family. This is your pastor R.C. Blakes Jr. and I am so excited to be able to share with you today New Home Family Worship Center. I love you. I love you in every location. I love you. All of our cyber church family, we love you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. And we just look forward to sharing with you from week to week. Well, if you've been paying attention, you know by now that the Spirit of God has been dealing with my heart relative to um, what my particular theme and those that would be connected to my voice in a pastoral sense, what our theme would be this year. It was uh, last year that the Spirit of God gave me one word, and that word was indomitable. I had heard the word before, but I had never really investigated the word, and I, come, I came rather to discover that the word simply means that which cannot be defeated, that which refuses to be conquered. And the Spirit of God said to me that this would be the year of indomitable faith. And so you will hear me from time to time coming back to this theme of indomitable faith. If you look in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, it says, For whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? You have a faith that God is manifesting in you that overcomes the world. You have a faith that is manifesting victory for you, even in a season, in, in a time, in an era when there is much defeat in the land. God said, you are in your time of indomitable faith. Now, there's a biblical record of a little sickly and even fragile woman who stepped into victory, stepped into indomitable faith and overcame dire circumstances. And it was because she had an indomitable faith. She refused to be defeated. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you made up your mind? that this is the year and this is the time that you will not be defeated. The things that the enemy has gotten away with in the past will not fly in this season. You are dug in, you are fortified, you are convinced of your own strength and ability in the almighty God, and you refuse to be defeated. If you go to Matthew chapter nine, verses 20 through 22, we see the record of this little woman I'm speaking of. And it reads like this, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, she was bleeding, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall behold, behold rather. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, this is the account of a lady who was literally tapped out. She was drained financially. You know, one version said that she had spent all and had not gotten any better. She had given all of her money to the doctors. 
she was tapped out clearly emotionally because this had gone on for 12 years. Think about it. We've been dealing with uh, the coronavirus at the point in time that I'm delivering this message. We've been dealing with it for a little over two years. And how many of us are emotionally spent, even those of us who've never actually had the virus. But this woman had been bleeding for 12 years and she clearly was tapped out physically. How can you bleed for 12 years and not be tapped out physically? And this same lady comes to the point where she hears about Jesus. Go and read the whole story. She hears about Jesus and somehow as she hears about Jesus, something comes alive in her. It's called faith. And she develops or contacts a divine certainty that she will be healed. She heard of Jesus and faith came alive in her. What am I doing? I am causing faith to come alive in you. Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? The word of God. This was indomitable faith. This lady had tapped into when she heard of Jesus came alive in her. And, you know, sometimes all you need is one word from God to pull you out of a hopeless and desperate or even desolate situation. One word from God can cause your spirit to leap again. It can cause your vision to become clear again. It can cause your strength to return. Sometimes all you need is one word from God. But this lady tapped into indomitable faith. Now, it's that faith that overcomes. That's what indomitable faith is. It's the faith that overcomes the world. It's the faith that brings us into victory. Number one, when we look at this lady, she overcame her very real feelings. You know, this lady had to have some very real feelings. Bleeding for 12 years, spent all of her money. She had to have some very real feelings like there are some of you right now who are, who are having, who are experiencing some very real feelings. And some religious people will have you to believe that somehow because you're saved, that you're not supposed to have feelings. But human nature makes us know that she had to be feeling low and depressed. After bleeding for 12 years, after spending all that she had, she had to have some very real feelings. We put it this way today. I'm feeling some kind of way. Have you ever been there where you, you were just feeling some kind of way? You were feeling some kind of way about God, towards God, towards family, towards the circumstances you were facing? But indomitable faith transcends feelings. The faith that God is causing to come alive in you right now rises above your feelings. And I, I prophetically declare and decree that over your life now. It doesn't matter what you're feeling. This indomitable faith is causing you to rise above your feelings. It doesn't matter what you've dealt with, what you've gone through. This indomitable faith that's coming alive in you is, is causing you, empowering you to transcend your feelings. Second Corinthians five and seven says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Glory to God. In other words, we walk by what God said. Not by what we can see or what we can look at with our eyes, hear with our ears, feel with our hands. We walk by faith and not by sight. Listen to how this same 
text reads in the message version. It says, it's what we trust in, but don't yet see that keeps us going. It's what we trust in, but don't yet see is the thing that keeps us going. And so we see this indomitable faith overriding feelings. You know, in all of the patriarchs, I saw it in my late father, Bishop Robert Charles Blake Sr., who, you know, dealt with more than, you know, any man should really have to deal with physically. It was amazing to watch this man lay hands on the sick and watch them recover and then go home and have to deal with his own infirmities. In many days, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there questioning God. And while I'm sitting there questioning God, my father never questioned God. He never lived in his feelings. He always stayed in his faith. When the doctor said to him, you're going to die. I mean, on a number of occasions, they said this to him. This gentleman says to the doctor, God is my source. Doctor, all you're doing is practicing medicine. But God is my source. And I've, I saw him time after time after time get up off of what was considered a deathbed because he overrode his indomitable faith, overrode his feelings. And just like just like this woman had to override her feelings to get up and to go and to uh, pursue Jesus. There was a brother by the name of Abram. Who overrode his feelings. God took this 90 year old man and made a promise to him to give him a child to he and, you know, to his older wife. And somehow Abram had to work through all of his physical limitations as almost a hundred year old man and his wife being an elderly woman to yet trust God. And I'm saying to you right now that there are some of you who are wrestling with your feelings next to what God said to you. And my word to you today is to move out of what you're looking at. Close your eyes and see what God is showing you and trust what you can see in your spirit, but you can't yet look at with your natural eye because indomitable faith overrides feelings. Romans chapter four, verses 17 and 18 says, as it is written, speaking of Abram, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now listen to this passage in the message version. It says, we call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word, make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do but on what God said he would do and so he was made father of a multitude of peoples God said to him you're going to have a big family Abraham as your as you hear the word it is overcoming your very real and even justifiable feelings. Your physical ailments sometimes are overwhelming, but your faith in what God said will empower you to overcome your feelings, just like it did Abraham. Number two, this lady had this indomitable faith 
this lady that was bleeding for 12 years and it empowered her to overcome her obvious thoughts. Now, you already know that she had to fight with her own mind. I mean, oh, my goodness, the thoughts never stop coming. You know, when you're in when you're in a desperate situation, the thoughts never stop coming. What you know, what if what if I die? What if what if this never changes? What, what if I'm wasting my time? You know, thoughts like, you know, you might as well give up. Look how long you've been trying to do this. You may as well give up. God's not going to come through for you. You know, this lady had all of those thoughts, but indomitable faith. When she heard of Jesus, that indomitable faith came alive in her. And it empowered her to overcome her feelings and to overcome her obvious thoughts. First Timothy chapter six, verses 11 and 12. Says, but thou, O man of God. Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And listen to what verse 12 says. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, where is the fight? The fight of faith. The fight of faith is in the mind. Spiritual warfare is waged in the thoughts. When you tap into indomitable faith, it empowers you to overcome those thoughts that the enemy fires through our minds just randomly. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses four and five, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Watch this to the pulling down of strongholds or thought systems, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you tap into this indomitable faith, it empowers you to overcome the thoughts that hold you back. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you have you ever wrestled with thoughts that were debilitating? Have you? Have you ever wrestled with thoughts that, you know, kept you up all night long and thoughts that almost made you doubt God? Thoughts that certainly made you doubt yourself. As you continue to hear the word of God and as you meditate upon the word of God, this indomitable faith is going to come alive in you and it's going to empower you to overcome these thoughts. In fact, about it, I prophetically declare and decree over your life now that every thought that rises up to do warfare against the will of God in your life, we pull it down together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pull it down together in the name of Jesus Christ. Every thought that does not agree with God's will, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. This indomitable faith that overcomes. Not only did this lady with this issue of blood, not only did she. Not only did it empower, not only did her faith empower her to overcome her feelings, her real feelings, her obvious thoughts. But this faith also empowered this lady to overcome her facts. This lady had medical facts working against her. And yet she rose to the occasion. Now, let me ask you something. How many of you have facts? You know, you went to the doctor and he took your blood and the blood work came back and said, 
XYZ in medical science is factual. It says this is that and that is this. How many of you have gotten reports or whatever in life, you know, where it was factual? But I'm here to tell you that there's a power that transcends the facts. You don't have to ignore the facts. Or rather, should I say, you don't have to uh, disregard the facts as though they don't ignore the facts as though they don't exist. But you have to get to a point in your life where you can say, OK, now those are facts, but facts are not my faith. This woman's indomitable faith overcame the actual facts of her condition. You see where facts run out, faith fills the gap. Glory to God. When, when, when there's no natural recourse, when there's no natural solution, my faith says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When the facts, when the facts are not favorable, my faith kicks in because faith fills the gap where facts run out. Now, if you go to Romans chapter four, Romans chapter four, verses 19 through 21, it says, and being not weak in faith, speaking of Abram again, he considered not, underline that, his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Notice how the Bible says that Abram considered not. He knew the facts, but he did not give attention to the facts. In fact, the scripture shows us that rather Abram turned his back on the facts and he turned his faith towards the promises of God because he believed that God was able to perform everything he promised. Now, there are some things that God has promised you and the facts seem to contradict what God promised. The question is, what are you going to meditate on? Whose report are you going to believe? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. How many times have I been in situation where the facts were unfavorable and it looked like there was no way in the world I would come out of this? But somehow, some way. My God, my God, the power of God transcended the facts. And the same power that helped this lady to overcome the facts, the fact that she had been bleeding 12 years, the fact that medical science could do absolutely nothing for her, the fact that she was now broke, the fact that she was now weak. This woman got a revelation. Glory to God. And the revelation that she got put a firm conviction in her heart. If I can just get to the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. I don't even need him to lay hands on me. I don't need him to anoint me with oil. My faith is overcoming my facts. You see, facts can't alter faith. Listen to this. Facts cannot alter faith, but faith will always alter facts. My late father said, faith does not make sense, but it does make miracles. You see, the facts can't change your faith, but your faith can change the facts. Your faith can send you back to the same doctor who will have to scratch his or her head and say, I, I, this is just a miracle. I don't know what this is. Because indomitable faith overcomes the facts. If you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 through 29, it says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 
and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The faith that God is stirring in you today is a faith that's going to go against the facts and to the world it's going to look like foolishness. But when God gets through, it's going to overcome the facts and it's going to bring glory to God and no flesh will be able to take credit for it. You are in a season. You are in a season of amazing transition. God is taking you and he's moving you from one dimension to the next. You're not even doing it in levels now. You're shifting dimensions. Because this indomitable faith is coming alive in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak it. I declare it. And it is so. In your life. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We here at RC Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.